So now that we've seen Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality, let's see them in action. In this video, we'll see a few examples of using Markov's and Chebyshev's inequality. Our first example is coin flipping. Let x denote the number of heads that we get after flipping a fair coin n times. We can use both Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality to bound the probability that we see more than, say, 3n divided by 4 heads. So what does Markov's inequality say? Okay, so we have the expected value of x is equal to n over 2. So Markov's inequality tells us that the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3n divided by 4 is at most n over 2, that's the expectation, divided by 3n over 4, which simplifies to 2 thirds. Okay, so that's less than 1, but it's not great. Now let's try Chebyshev's inequality. We'll see that Chebyshev's inequality will do better here. So to use Chebyshev's inequality, we need to calculate the variance of x. You can check that the variance of x in this case is equal to n divided by 4. Actually, it's a good idea to pause the video right now and verify that this is true. So then Chebyshev's inequality says that the probability that x is bigger than 3n divided by 4, well, this is less than or equal to the probability that x minus its expectation, n over 2, is greater than or equal to n over 4. This is less than or equal to, using Chebyshev's inequality, n over 4 divided by n over 4 squared, which simplifies to 4 over n. So in this case, Chebyshev's inequality gives a much better answer than Markov's inequality, because this value here, 4 over n, goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, while 2 thirds is just always going to be 2 thirds. Okay, but what's the right answer? Based on the central limit theorem, you might expect that the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3n over 4 is bounded by something that's exponential in n. In fact, this turns out to be the case, and we'll see this when we talk about turnoff bounds soon. But for now, this is still a good example of using both Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality to bound the probability that x is too large. Our next example, which we've discussed before, is known as the coupon collector's problem. The setup is the following, based on an ad campaign for cereal. There are n distinct types of coupons that you can collect. They are hidden inside boxes of cereal. Every time you buy a box, you get a coupon. If you get all n coupons, you get a prize or something. The question is, how many boxes of cereal do you need to buy before you collect all of the coupons? This is assuming that you're selecting boxes randomly and independently. Just as an aside, I don't know if boxes of cereal still have coupons or toys or whatever in them, or if I've just stopped eating the types of cereal that do have coupons or toys or whatever in them. But regardless of whether or not this actually shows up in boxes of cereal anymore, the coupon collector's problem shows up all over the place. A more generic way to say this is, how many balls do you have to throw randomly into n bins before each bin has a ball in it? To analyze the coupon collector's problem, let's let xi denote the number of boxes you need to open before you see the i plus first new type of coupon. So then xi is a geometric random variable with parameter n minus i divided by n. This is because after we've collected i coupons, there are n minus i coupons we haven't seen yet, and the probability of getting any one of those is n minus i divided by n. Therefore, the expected value of xi is equal to n divided by n minus i. This is just because the expectation of a geometric random variable with parameter p is 1 over p, like we saw in an earlier video. Now, let x be the number of boxes you open before seeing all n types of coupons. That is, x is the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of xi. It's the amount of time you spend waiting for the first new coupon, followed by the amount of time you spend waiting for the second new coupon, and so on. So we can compute the expected value of x which is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of the expected value of each xi using linearity of expectation, which is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of n divided by n minus i, using our expression here for the expected value of xi. And this is equal to n times the sum from j equals 1 to n of 1 over j, changing variables from i to j in the sum. And now this is equal to n log n plus big O of n, using an approximation for this sum. Now we can try to use both Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality to bound the probability that, for example, we haven't seen all n types of coupons after 2n log n boxes have been opened. So Markov's inequality says that the probability 
that x is greater than or equal to 2n log n is at most n log n plus big O of n, this is the expectation we computed on the previous slide, divided by 2n log n, which simplifying is uh, at most 1 half plus some little o of one term. Here, little o of one just means that this term goes to zero as n approaches infinity. In order to apply Chebyshev's inequality, we need to compute the variance of x, so let's do that real quick. First, we're going to use the fact that if y is a geometric random variable with parameter p, then the variance of y is given by 1 minus p divided by p squared. It's a good exercise to work this out. In fact, you can use the same neat trick that we did in an earlier video when we saw that the expected value of y was 1 over p. But assuming this fact, let's compute the variance of x. First, we can use the fact that the xi are independent to say that the variance of x, which is the sum of the xi, is just equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of the variances of each xi. Using the above fact, this is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 minus n minus i divided by n divided by n minus i divided by n squared. Now simplifying, this is equal to n times the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of i divided by n minus i squared. To apply Chebyshev's inequality, we only need an upper bound on the variance, so let's bound this expression here by a simpler one. First, we can note that this i here is always going to be less than n, so let's just bound this by n squared times the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 divided by n minus i squared. Now, once again, we can change variables in the sum. So this is the sum from j equals 1 to n of 1 over j squared. And this sum here, the sum from j equals 1 to n of 1 over j squared, is bounded above by the sum from j equals 1 to infinity of 1 over j squared, which has a nice closed form. So this is at most n squared times pi squared divided by 6. And here this pi squared divided by 6 happens to be what you get when you take this sum to infinity. So now let's return to our calculation with Chebyshev's inequality. Remember that we just saw that the variance of x is bounded by n squared times pi squared divided by 6. So now the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2n log n is at most the probability that x minus its expectation, absolute value, is at most n log n plus big O of n. Again, this is using our calculation of the expectation from before. Using Chebyshev's inequality, this is at most the variance of x divided by n squared log squared n times some 1 plus the low of 1 term, which, using our calculation of the variance we just did, is at most pi squared divided by 6 log squared n times some 1 plus little o of 1 term. So altogether, this is big O of 1 over log squared n. As before, we see that Chebyshev's inequality does better than Markov's inequality here. Markov's inequality gives us 1 half as a bound on this probability, where Chebyshev's inequality gives us at least something that goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Finally, what's the actual answer? Again, the probability that x is too large, that is, that we haven't found all the coupons after 2n log n boxes, is going to be much smaller than either Markov or Chebyshev tells us. One easy way to see this is to note that the probability that x is bigger than 2n log n is at most n times 1 minus 1 over n to the 2n log n. This is because this is the probability here that we never see any particular coupon after 2n log n boxes. And this here is for the union bound over all n coupons. So this expression is bounded by n times e to the minus 2n log n, which is also known as 1 over n. So in this case, this 1 over n is much smaller than the big O of 1 over log squared n that Chebyshev gave us. At this point, you might be wondering, why would we ever want to use either of these inequalities? Based on the examples so far, Markov seems to be always worse than Chebyshev, which is always worse than the truth by a fair amount. The reason we might want to use these inequalities is that both Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality are extremely general, and in fact, sometimes they are tight. So let's see a few examples now where Markov and Chebyshev might be a good idea. We may see some more examples in class and or on your homework. 
First, let's see an example where Markov gives us something, but Chebyshev doesn't. This can happen when a random variable doesn't have bounded variance, or at least doesn't have variance that is very easily bounded. As an extreme example, consider this random variable x, where the probability that x is equal to k is given by some constant c divided by k cubed, for k equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. Here, the constant c is just a normalizing constant chosen so that the probability is summed to 1. So let's try Markov's inequality. The expected value of x is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k times c divided by k cubed, this is just using the definition of the expectation, which is equal to c times the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by k squared. This sum converges, and this is just equal to c times pi squared over 6. So Markov's inequality says that the probability that x is greater than some t is bounded above by c pi squared divided by 6t. So this is a decent bound. At least as t gets large, this tends to zero. On the other hand, let's try Chebyshev's inequality. We can compute the expected value of x squared. This is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k squared times c divided by k cubed, which is equal to c times the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by k. Now this sum diverges, so this is equal to infinity. This implies that the variance of x, which is just equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared, is infinite. Therefore, Chebyshev's inequality is going to tell us that the probability that x is greater than t is at most the variance of x divided by t squared, which is equal to infinity frowny face. So in this example, Chebyshev doesn't give us anything at all, and we'd prefer to use Markov's inequality. So when might we want to use Chebyshev's inequality? One place where Chebyshev's inequality can be super useful is when you are bounding a sum of pairwise independent random variables. This shows up a lot. The reason this can be useful is that if x1 through xn are pairwise independent, then the variance of their sum is just equal to the sum of the variances. If you haven't seen this before, now's a good time to pause the video and convince yourself that this is true. One specific example where this shows up is with pairwise independent hash functions. You may have seen something like these before in CS161. So for this example, let p be prime and consider the following hash family, h. So h consists of functions h, a, b, where h, a, b maps a vector x in z, p to the k, to zp, and it's given by the dot product of a and x plus b mod p. Here, recall that zp just refers to the integers 0 through p minus 1 mod p. We talked about this in an earlier video. Thus, this hash family h maps some universe, zp to the k, down to p buckets labeled 0, 1, dot dot dot, up to p minus 1. Here's a typical use case for a pairwise independent hash family. Suppose that there are n items in the universe that might show up, x1, x2, dot dot dot, all the way up to xn. We're going to pick some hash function h, a, b, in h uniformly at random. And then we're going to use that function, little h, a, b, to map our items x into these buckets. So for example, maybe x1, maps into bucket 1, and what that means is that a dot x plus b is equal to 1 mod p. Similarly, maybe xn is going to map into bucket p minus 1, and maybe x2 is going to collide with x1 and also map into bucket 1. For most applications of hash functions, we'd like these buckets to be pretty balanced. That is, we want each of them to have about n over p items in them. We can use Chebyshev's inequality to bound the probability that this happens. To do this, let's pick some y in zp, and let's think about the probability that h of xi equals y, that is item i hashes to bucket y, for too many values of i, for more than you might expect, for more than 1 over p plus epsilon times n, for some small constant epsilon. We can analyze this by defining indicator random variables. So let xi be the indicator random variable that is 1, 
if h of little xi is equal to y and zero otherwise. Then we can define capital X as the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. Now you can check that the expected value of x is equal to n divided by p, and we are interested in the probability that x is greater than 1 over p plus epsilon times n. By Chebyshev's inequality, this is at most the variance of x divided by epsilon squared times n squared. At this point, you should check that these random variables xi are pairwise independent. You'll need to use the fact that p is prime and use what we learned about the group zp star in a previous video. So it's a great idea to pause the video now and verify that for yourself, or you can check out the lecture notes for a few more details on this. Given that, we can write this as the sum from i equals 1 to n of the variance of xi divided by epsilon squared n squared. Now I've awkwardly run out of space, so I'm going to move my little picture of the hash function up uh, to get it out of the way. Okay, carrying on. The variance of xi is just equal to 1 over p times 1 minus 1 over p. This is because each xi is just a Bernoulli random variable that's 1 with probability 1 over p. So this whole expression is this, the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over p times 1 minus 1 over p divided by epsilon squared n squared. So this gives us an answer to our question, what is the probability that too many items land in bucket y? It's at most 1 over p times 1 minus 1 over p divided by epsilon squared n. Now we can ask, what's the probability that there are any buckets with too many items in them? For this, we can just take a union bound over all p buckets and see that this is at most well, 1 minus 1 over p divided by epsilon squared n, which is itself at most 1 divided by epsilon squared times n. If epsilon is fixed and n is getting large, this quantity goes to zero. So that's great. So in this case, Chebyshev's inequality tells us that for this particular pairwise independent hash family, it's unlikely that any given bucket is too lopsided, at least provided that n is sufficiently large. So to recap, Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality are both very general, and in some cases they can be very powerful. However, sometimes they don't give tight bounds. In a future lecture, we'll talk about Chernoff bounds and other sorts of tail bounds that can give stronger results in some situations. So that's it for this short video. Thanks for watching.